Once again, folks, it's the weekend, and it's cobbler time. You know, I've been working a lot of weekends here, uh, well, all the way up till this part of the year, and then they finally hired someone. And uh, now I have both Saturday and Sunday off. They hired some part-timers to take the place for the weekends, which was nice of them, finally. <laughs> and I get to do these sorts of things. And then with the fire ban off the state of Arkansas after the drought, I mean, it's like Katie bar the door. You know what I'm saying? So today, the cobbler will be, we're going to do a cherry, a cherry cobbler. We're going to put some of that old cherries in there, but you know, I'm a, I'm a multi-dimensional guy, so we're also going to add some strawberries to it. Strawberry and cherry. That sounds like it ought to be cool. And just to make things a little lively and a little interesting, we're going to add some wild Swedish lignin berries to it. Oh man, lingonberries. I mean, if you guys never had these, if you guys have never had these, well, either have I. So let's go ahead and just mix all three of them together and see what we can get. But this time, you know, I'm going to melt my butter down just like I normally do. I'm going to melt it on the stove. But this time, I think we'll go with half of the amount of cake mix instead. Of, we use, again, we're using a Betty Crocker white cake mix. We're going to go with half the amount because I want. The, the cake to be a little bit thinner so the cherries and stuff bubble up through the top. And I'm not going to cover the entire thing with the cake mix. I'm going to kind of leave a few holes, you know what I mean? It'll probably run together anyway, but I'm going to try to have it not do that. Now, I did the last time. Wifey said I had to have two eggs. Well, we got half the amount of uh, cake mix, so this we're going to have one egg. And then, of course, instead of a full cup of water, we're going to have a half a cup. And then instead of a third of a cup of oil, we're going to have half of a third of a cup of oil. Don't ask me what that equates to. I just kind of eyeballed it, you know. <laughs> okay, well, let's get started on melting the butter. And then we'll go ahead and mix all this other stuff together. All right, the strawberries are, or I mean, the cherries are in. Now we're going to pour in them old strawberries. Wife and I, wifey and I had a powwow. She says just dump the strawberries, the entire can in there not a problem. Now comes the lignin berries. Here's what the lignin berries look like. These little tiny things. It's supposed to be real sweet. I don't know. We're only going to put about half the jar in there. That way it won't be overrun with lignin berries. And now we're going to just stir all this mess together. Yeah, get it evenly distributed. Oh, this is going to be so good. This is going to be so good. Sky Carl, I know your lips are smacking already. I can hear them all the way down here, son. Wifey says uh, that the mixture tastes pretty sweet, but I thought it had kind of a tangy taste to it. So what I'm going to do is add, instead of a half a cup, we'll just add a quarter of a cup of sugar. That's kind of a compromise, you know. Quarter cup instead of a half this time. And we're going to stir it around. Not going to be any tapioca. Not going to be any tapioca. Just going to stir that stuff up real good. The batter is ready to go. All we got to do now is melt the butter and get it out there on the fire. All right, we're about ready. Everything's mixed up. The batter is ready to go. And uh, over here in my big frying pan, we got some potatoes. We're going to be frying up some taters and onions today to go with this dinner. And uh, I've got it covered with, uh, you know, good old Cavender's all-purpose Greek seasoning, of course. Everybody uses that, I think. And I've got some light brown sugar, not the dark. I've got some light brown sugar that I plan to sprinkle over the top of the batter once it starts getting just about to the point where it's done. And it'll help give it a nice brownish color. And over here, wifey later on is going to be using this skillet to cook up some chicken drumettes. Chicken drumettes. So we'll see how it all goes. We're about ready for the fire here. I gotta melt the butter now. Okay, the, all that cherry mixture is in there. And I did not mix it with the butter. Uh, wifey warned me against that one more time. You know, a lot of you folks comment sometimes on, well, you know, I'm on a diet, you know, it's cholesterol and all this other jazz. And, you know, I'm fortunate. I've never had to worry about my weight too much. But I don't know. Here's the way I see it. You know, I don't want to be laying on my deathbed someday and the last thought go through my mind, I should have ate that cobbler. Well, she's in there, everything except the cake mix, that is. 
So come on, cherries. Wifey made me take all the potatoes back out of the frying pan. You know, she's got this idea that I should put the grease or the oil in first and then put the potatoes in once the grease heats up. Yeah. <laughs> Poor misguided woman, but I'm going to go ahead and do it her way. And uh, just, you know how it is. I got to be a dutiful husband here. Anyway, we're going to be cooking in lard, of course. I'm telling you, when I was a kid, I was raised on lard. That's all we had. And it just makes everything taste so much better. But I'm not going to use a ton of it. All right, time for the first check. Let's see how we're looking down in there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Wifey's going to pour the batter in for me. Oh, I just, just kind of drizzle it around. I don't want it to cover, like, the whole top. We want some of that stuff to come poking up through there. Yeah, looking good. And once again, we'll place our stainless steel ring on there. And then take the shovel. Got the shovel right here. Just shovel those coals up in there and put them right on the top. Just shovel them in there. Just slather them in there. We don't care. We want heat up there. I break the, uh, the coals back. From the bottom of the pot uh, enough to keep heat you know going around it but not right up against it you know too much just kind of scrape it about there's plenty of heat down there if you stick your hand down there you'll find out let's get some some of that brown sugar on there now look at that oh god now's the time to put it on let it melt on down there no particular no particular amount just whatever you feel is right okay all right all right Wifey's helping out here. She's learning. I'm teaching her so much. I'll tell you what. Next, I got to start on Grandma. That's her mom who lives with us. She she likes learning my cooking techniques. It is time to check it one last time. I think it should be ready. Ooh, ooh, look at that. Look at that. Oh God, I can't wait to dig into that one. It's time for the potatoes and onions to get started. And there she is, still bubbling away just a little bit. I'll tell you what, I cannot tell you how good this smells. <laughs> this is going to be fabuloso. All right, we're waiting for the old fire to build back up here. And in a few seconds, we're going to set the big old giant skillet on that thing. To keep the ashes uh, from getting in the skillet while we're frying from the fire, I'll be covering it with aluminum foil, but I thought I'd pass along something that some of you might not know. At the end of these uh, aluminum foil boxes and wax paper is a punch-in thing. You take your thumb and you punch it, punch it in there like that. And it holds the roll in place. For years it's been like that and I never knew about it. Let me punch this one here. There we go. Now the roll is held in place, so as you pull the foil out or wax paper out, it won't come flying out on the floor. Right, we're going to spread out these little logs a little bit here, get them to be a little bit flatter. The reason for that is later on, if they were all like bunched up in the center, and later on when I need to, you know, slip another log in under here to keep it going, it would hit the pile. It wouldn't go all the way in unless you use little short stubby types. But this way you can slip it right in on top and it'll, it'll just go completely in there. And it spreads the heat out and gives fairly even heat too. Can't, of course, you can't get totally even heat with a fire. Frying pan's on. And, you know, whenever I cook on an open fire, I don't like to have like a blazing fire. I guess that's okay if you're out in the woods and you got a big open area. But, you know, I don't know. Just for cooking purposes, you don't really need a really big giant fire. Coals mostly, but it's kind of hard to achieve for me. I just kind of throw in some small logs as I need them. Anyway, we're melting down the lard. We'll be putting the potatoes in soon. All right, it's time to put the potatoes in. Wifey here, she's going to come out here and learn a little bit more. And we're going to go ahead and put them potatoes on in there. All right, so take that. Thank you. Now we'll just go ahead and spread them babies around in there. Oh, that's looking better by the second here. Looking real good. All right, let's see how our taters and onions are coming. Ooh, 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 boy, I'll tell you what, that's, 
That's looking real good. So far, so good. I haven't put the onions in yet, but I will. Let me get this over out of the way here. Oh yeah, they're starting to brown up beautifully. I'll tell you what, if you're going to cook in an open fire outside, get a big skillet. Wifey always used to give me these tiny, dinky, little woman-sized skillets. And I finally got tired of that crap, and I said, I'm going to get me a big one. So I bought me a big old log. I'm going to put that one back inside. All right, so John, that's are looking good. What's in that pot over there? Mm. Oh, that's some ham hocks and beans, or just ham and beans? Ham and beans. Ham and beans. All right. Do you need any tips or anything on how to cook or anything? You need, you need some advice on this? No? Oh, yeah, you can give me all the advice you want, but I'm doing it my way. Well, well that's not very polite. You know? uh, as the I mean, song I... said, I did it my way. <laughs> Little fire's burned down pretty good, and I think I'll just add a little more Cavendish seasoning to this thing. Just enough, you know, not a whole lot, just to give it a little, little more coloring. And we're almost ready to put the onions in there. we got to have them onions. It is time for the onions. Look how golden brown those things are turning out. Ooh, I'm just amazed. Lots of onions. Got to got to have onions. They should call this stuff onions and taters instead of taters and onions. All right, she's just about ready to come off. About another minute or two, and this stuff's going on the table. Okay, how we doing here? Where's the chicken? How's it taste, Joseph? Good. Good, good, good. Wait till you try the cobbler later. Grandma, <laughs> how's it taste so far? So far, so good. Have you tasted the taters and onions yeah. yet? Are they good? Mm -hmm. mm, good, good. Uh, our potatoes and onions are good in the old days. That's right. I'll tell you what, maybe I'm now the... The tater and onion king too, huh? <laughs> right, honey? Yep. <laughs> well, look, look, don't talk so much. Just try to eat, okay? <laughs> One last thing. Texas Pete hot sauce. If you've never put hot sauce, Texas Pete, on your chicken wings or your chicken, you don't know what you're missing. This is good stuff. Texas Pete in particular. It never goes bad. You know, Louisiana hot sauce gets kind of vinegary after a while, after it's sat around. Never happened with Texas Pete, whether it's in the fridge or not. Great stuff. Okay, here's the big moment, ladies and gentlemen. We are, Grandma and I are just dying for some of the, oh, God, look at that. we got to get some of that stuff down there in the bottom. Some of this peach co or cherry cobbler. Look at that. Oh. Man, that must look so good. That sugar, by the way, is nice and crunchy on top. Mm -mm -mm. Almost like a, almost like a pineapple upside down cake topping. Look at that. Ooh, man. Wifey wants just a little bit. She said she said she don't want a whole lot. But she likes a lot of juice in hers. Matter of fact, so do I. I think I'll put a little more on top of there. So does Grandma. I know Grandma does. We'll just give her a little bit. She don't want a whole lot. And here it is for Grandma. Grandma says, Thank you. Grandma says, you only live once. You might as well go for the ice cream, right? Yes. That's right. <laughs> she ought to know. She should know. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. There it is. Have at it. Got that. Got that butter pecan ice cream on it again. Uh, good, good stuff, ain't it? Mm -hmm. You, you can make me fat. <laughs> <laughs> and here's mine. Ooh, I tell you what, that that stuff smells so good. I hope it tastes that way. It is good. Mmm, boy, that's good stuff, ain't it, baby? Good. Yes, sir. <laughs> Great stuff. Give it a try, everybody. This is really good.